Rugby League's tragic soap opera continues with Anthony Watmau, the ex-Manly legend, coming out last week and giving what was a pretty extraordinary spray against his ex-teammate, Daly Cherry Evans. Now, Will, there's obviously been some tension bubbling and, and you obviously are, are friends with, with Anthony Watmau and spoke with him today. Is there anything you can shed light on this situation? Yeah, well, obviously, Chucky will not say another word. He's been out, like, as soon as he retired, he's not the sort of player that wants to be in the media or anything like that. He's happy with his life. But obviously, this kid's been playing on his mind. It's been pissing him off for ages. And he just had to say something. I think he, he, he done a podcast with the NRL or something like that. They asked him some questions. He just gives some real answers. And it's changed the whole narrative on DCE because everyone's, all these little stories have been going about him, you know, with the, you could just listen to the Watmau story. You know, like he's saying, oh, you know, he was on 50 grand next to me, he's on 500, tells, pretty much tells the team to fuck off, go, I, I want an upgrade. So it cost other players, they had to move on. And it was just, it was playing on his mind. I've spoke to guys like, you know, Brett Stewart and some other guys, and they're like, it's not going to be the first one to come out. There's about five or six of them that took pay cuts to stay together, to be successful from, from pretty much 05. And then they'll, they won two premierships, they've been to four grand finals, and they, they built a dynasty. And then, obviously, the, he comes along, Cherry, wins the grand final in 2011, plays really well, wins the Clive Churchill in, in 2013, plays everything, played, done everything well. But guys like Brett Stewart, Glenn Stewart, Glenn Stewart got shifted to, to South. You think Brett Stewart wasn't filthy? You think mm. Steve Maddow wasn't filthy? Do you think that whole crew that was together was fucking livid they were because I was I was in 2015 and I've never seen never been involved in a team that I could just see such a divide in a club mm. and it was because of Cherry Evans and what happened with 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 Gifty and all the other senior players they're over here the younger kids are over there and then I was sort of I was just floating around the middle as usual one thing that <laughs> that where there's smoke there's fire now Cherry Evans, to me, as an outsider, he's clean cut. There's no stink about him personal life. There's Do you reckon he's like going that. ball? There's a strong chance that he's going to need no. some sort of hair replacement. <laughs> yeah. Taking that out, his horrendous haircut, when there's that much noise about a player, there's got to be some truth to it. Now, if he's yeah. been banned from Queensland Origin, allegedly because the players don't get on with him, his ex-teammates are all lining up to take pot shots at him. Is he a dickhead? I don't understand. He's not. He's not a dickhead. I, I, I don't feel bad or anything like saying saying anything against him because I'm not really being like destroying his reputation or anything like that. I think he's a good kid, but all this shit that's been happening around him, like something's wrong. You know what I mean? Like it's just like, well, why is everyone sort of coming out taking pot shots at you? Why? Why is he one of the most talented kids that can't even get in a Queensland squad? Mm. You're picking Ben Hunt. He's a better player than Ben Hunt. But obviously I heard some rumours through, through other people. He, he got the start for Origin a couple of times and he's lost both times. So that's getting the keys to a Ferrari back in them days, you know, when the Queensland were just red hot. Mm. Stuffed up twice. There was a decision where Morgan or him could have got picked in a decider. Obviously the senior playing group went, you know what, let's pick Morgan. So players didn't want to play with him. Yeah. So the whole, this, this is the thing, the whole narrative has changed now with Chockey coming out and just really just laying it down on him. And, it, and Chockey wasn't lying because he was there through that whole thing and he's seen it all unravel. He took Cherry Evans under his wing, you know, and, and looked mm. after him and, one, and he told Cherry, we've been taking pay cuts to stay together. Like I, I was at the Bulldogs, we took pay cuts to stay together because you want success, you want to win, you want to win premierships, you want to stay together because you don't want to lose anyone. And if some little prick like that, if I was at the Bulldogs, said, I'm holding out for five, another 500,000, I'd say to the coach, fuck him off. Mm. I, don't want him to, I, don't, I don't want him in our, in, our, in our crew. Get another kid who actually wants to play for the club. I mean, Tom, the thing about team sports is that you're part of something that's bigger than yourself. And, and a team won't work if that's not the, not the case. Now, is this a situation, do you think, where a bloke's put himself above a team and this is the outcome? Well, I think from the outsider's perspective, absolutely. I mean, you know, it was interesting hearing Willie talk. You know, I guess my first question was, would you have a beer with him? Um, and not I guess, in public. Not in public. And, and, and I think that, you know, 
you've got to be honest, it's the most polarising, you know, sporting team or person at the moment. That's a bit rich coming from me because I, I certainly did that a good job of that. But, you know, you think about what's going on with cricket, um, I haven't thought about another person that's divided a team or destroyed a culture and I'm not blaming him solely. I appreciate there's other factors, board, you know, governance, et cetera, political things going on. But to lose legends of the club and for them to come out and have a pot chat at you, it's okay for people to have a shot at you that may not have given what they've given to Manly. But you're talking about people that are the fabric of that jersey. The yeah. foundation of that club was built by the Stewart brothers, the Wat Mao, yes. Matai, the people that are all lining up. And whether you like it or not, you know, and every sportsman, the people that have been in the trenches with you and have done it time and time again like those guys have, if they've got a gripe with you and they're willing to air it about that, and about being selfish, about being greedy, about you know, not being patient for the betterment of the whole culture, and he isn't delivering now, mm. then there's something really problematic about it. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you were considered to be a prick or a grub or whatever it might be. I wasn't be. on 500,000 or whatever he's earning. But I'll tell, you what, on yeah. I'll tell you what, Tom, not one player that played with you would ever have anything but the highest respect for the way you conduct yourself on the field, the way you played. He's come out and, or, or his teammates have come out and they've had a shot at him and they've been in those trenches with him. So it's a very, won a very premiership strange. with him. Yeah. But what I don't like really is when there's an error at the moment for the young side, there's some young players in it, they've got an injury, is the way he looks at them and the way he like his demeanour towards them. It's like, well, mate, you roll up in the front line and you make a dominant shot or you, yeah. you come up with the play. Um, and I just don't see that. They got uh, beaten a couple of weeks ago by a fair bit and you just look at them and just think, mate, you're just there, you know. The body the language just say sometimes, like, I've played with Cherry, and he's a, he's a good kid. He's got a lot of talent. But the, as I said, the, the narrative has changed big time now in the last sort of week. It's been bubbling in in the NRL sort of inner sanctum with players going, oh, they're going to come out. I knew Chockey was going to come out and just slam him. I'm just waiting for other the other players that played with him to come out. So this is, this is not the end of it. And I just think at the start, if he just had a held out and listened to Chockey and said, look, just play that year because – they made him. He was a good player, but I mean, like you, he was a product of that environment. You know, they, they were successful. They were a absolute animals. You know, for about f at least eight or nine years, they were, they, were, they were easy top four for the for the whole time. And I think if he had a held out and made and made that decision where it wasn't a selfish decision, the whole narrative would have changed. I think that whole club would have stayed together. And they still would have been there now. Obviously, I mean, players would have been retired by now. But you wouldn't have the, the Stewart brothers, you know, the Mad Eyes, Jamie Lyons. Do you think you know, he'll come Chucky, out? Chucky Watt I don't think I, I don't think Jamie Lyon or anyone that will come out. But I think a, a couple of other players will come out and 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 give their own uh, peace of well, mind. But I just think if he had a held out just for that one year and backed himself because he's a talent, there's no doubt that, he, that he's a, a really really good player. But if he held out just say that one year, stuck together, listened to Chucky, sacrificed himself. And then he would have got that big deal, you know. And then, you know, another couple of things, even when I was there, it was like he signed with the Titans for like 10 years. And he made a big, he made a big you know, we're sitting on the, we're doing some cardio. I was training really hard. I was on the bike, <laughs> sitting on the bike. No, wheels weren't even moving. Um, and then there was a big, there was a big fucking, oh, there's a big, there's a big uh, meeting. Oh, Cherry Evans got something to say. I just signed a deal with the Titans boys, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, who gives a fuck? You don't hold a meeting about that. Just fuck, get me back on the bike. No one cared. <laughs> I mean, like, and then and then next minute, about a week or two after, or no, about a month after, bang, he's, he's re-signed with, with Manly for 10 years. So people just sort of, I think the kids, that, like the players like Brett Schilt was still there, Steve Moto, Steve Maddai and, and Jamie Lyon, all this sort of, we were at that club, you know, we were there and I and that, like, see the body language on them, they're just like, they didn't say anything. They just didn't have to say anything. It was just like him. Him reneging on that contract. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's, a, it's, it's a bad look. So, would has greed ruined his legacy? Well, it obviously has because if you have a look at his whole career now, it's all been about money. And mm. then pe people don't want you if you are all about money. You need. And he's a he's a manly boy. He's, it's a, he's played. Over, he's nearly played two hundred games with that club. And you know, you, you want to be. Playing with players who want to bleed for that club, and if you want to, if you're playing with a player you think that is only there for because he's on the good coin, 
do you get the most out of him? Oh, I don't think he's got a legacy. I don't think that he's good enough yet and he's won enough big games, as Willie's just touched upon, like big origin moments or games for Australia. It, it, you've got to ask himself, he's getting paid 18% of their salary cap. Like, <laughs> Willie, surely... I it think comes, he's the highest paid player in the comp. Surely it comes down... I mean, is this a Trent Barrett issue or is this a whole manly thing? I think um, he's obviously got a lot of big backers with the board. And I think at the time when he signed that 10-year deal... And I've never, ever hate on anyone for getting his money. Congratulations, you had a great deal. Good on you. But I think someone's backed him. I think, you know, Bob, Bob Fulton was always behind the scenes and he had something to do with it because he, he, would, he would never, ever give the yes to, to someone signing for 10 years. So obviously someone's backed him and they're still backing him. But it's just about as decision as Ray Lane Castle at the Bulldogs. Like, they're going that badly, the Seagulls. Like, maybe the Bulldogs have some hope of turning it around. They get new players. Yeah. But... Mate, no one wants to play with him. Like, so you get new players, you can get, yeah. you can fix the problem, but no yeah. one wants to play with him. That's yeah, the yeah. thing, Tom. Like, just yeah. say when you were playing, it's just like the biggest rap that you can get is that players actually want to play with yeah. you. Yeah. Players wanted to play with me, they wanted yeah. to play with you, and, that's, and you can walk around with your head held high after your retirement. Yeah. This, at the moment, players don't want to play with him. And, yeah. and to recruit other players to come into that fold, it's like, do I want to play with him? But then he's Maybe all, not. Yeah. No, I'll sign somewhere else. But then he's also saying Jackson Hastings, who I don't know, but is obviously very talented, you're not allowed to play with me. Like, you're writing checks your body can't cash. Like, you're right. not, you know, you're not... Andrew Johns. No. Mm. Like, he's not that good. No, he's not. And I, and I think it, they've obviously had a little bit of a sting, him and Hastings. We were talking about Hastings before. I think he deserves a crack. He yeah. still can't get a go. You know what I mean? He's, he's just been playing... So know, is Barrett bowing to Cherry Evans? Barrett's... I don't know. He's just a pawn in this whole little game. I don't. I don't think he has control over the club. There's obviously Manly have a higher power with the board and everything. There's always he's he's just a little puppet at the club, mm. and he's doing whatever they say. I don't, I mean, he's not obviously not picking the right team. The team's not going in the right direction. They're not listening to him. They're not doing anything for him. They're not playing for him. It's just like well. Someone's going to go. At the end of this year, someone's going. But this is like punch up on Mad Monday between staff. So Willie Peters and, yeah. and Ferris, the S&C. Yeah. They've had the whole salary cap dramas. They've yeah. got the Hastings thing. Cherry Evans has come out. Like you talk about, um, you know, bad press or a culture. It, 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 it's a debacle. It, it, it doesn't read well. Is this as bad? <laughs> no, it's awful. What yeah. you just said then, I was just like, wow. I thought I went through some shit. But do you know what I mean? Like, have you been involved in a club that's disintegrated for as they were perennial top four? No, no, not not the, not the way that they've sunk from two thousand. Yeah, exactly. Perennial top four teams all the time. In in all the time, or oh, mainly might they they might get to the grand final. Yeah. You know, now it's just like they're, they they're a bottom four team with a, with the talent that they've got. They should be in the top eight at least. But it's just like I've never been part of a club. Where they've just got the fall from grace is ridiculous. Like in the in the last, in, I'm, you're talking three years, three or four years, mm. from top four, bottom four, and mainly they, they're like the bulldogs. You know what I mean? They expect to be in the top eight all the time. So it's a struggle there. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. It's not like going through a rebuilding stage. Oh, they, they did lose some senior players, but they got some great players there. It's How, just like they're not. They're not. They're just not. They're playing shit. How low does it go if they don't get rid of it? Get rid of him or change it or get a new coach in? Like, can you see? Someone's it got it. Someone's got to go. I, I think if if Cherry keeps playing at that level, really, really bad, they'll 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 do something. I'll try and ship him off because there's absolutely no loyalty in this game in any in any game. So they don't give a shit. It's what what have you done for me lately? Oh, you played shit. So let's let's try and shop him off. But I, don't, I doubt that they'll let him go. They'll let the coach go. 